I'm Dean, I'm the dad. I'm Laura, I'm the mom. And I'm Chris Lou, I'm the daughter. And together we are Thanks. Family Plot. Well, happy Thanksgiving. Although we're recording this the day before, the show will drop sometime on Thanksgiving. I am not going to, uh, to certify when because, well, I've got a turkey to cook and uh, <laughs> mom's working during the day. And yep, happy turkey day. And Chris is going to be helping me make other fun things like. Because I don't have school. That's right. Well, you don't have. You haven't had school since today. Since today, we have all the rest of the week off. So we have five days of the. We have five days off. Nice. Come forward, cuddle child. Speaking of cuddle child, it was nice cuddling with the baby. She likes you. Yeah, I noticed sometimes. Is this you better? Yes, much better. All righty. So, as I said, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Uh, like I said, we will be dropping this out sometime on Thanksgiving Day. Thanksgiving Day <clears throat> for families and food. And family plots, apparently. So. Well, and given the topic of today's conversation, I say that's rather appropriate if a little sick and twisted, but. <laughs> I think that describes us in a nutshell. Very much so. But we have we have some updates, some things. Thank you to the person who left the review. It was a five star review, but it just the the, the review read, and I quote: "I will stab you in the chest!" All caps! Exclamation point. Five star review. So thanks for that, whoever you are. Sounds like. Sounds like Jim, it sounds like John or one of his friends. Oh Maybe. Oh my god, it's so mean. We appreciate the five stars. We're not quite sure about the uh, Well we do tell them, you know, say anything. So yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, but just some general updates. Uh, at, since this is our Thanksgiving show, that means we're heading towards December. And with December comes our Christmas show. And that show is always a bit up in the air because, you know, it, it's nice to touch on the Christmas traditions and, and other things. But I like to have listener stories in there somewhere just to sort of round things out. So if you've got something you want to share, get it off your chest. Heck, make a story up. I don't care. So, let us know. Also, to the person who asked on Twitter if we investigate stories, well, we redo our research every week, but if you want something specific, lay it out, and I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to check it out. But we'll see what we can do, absolutely. That was last week's episode. You, you did your best to vet it and do some... Right, and while I couldn't vet it as much as I like, the, the court seems evenly split on people who believed it and people who didn't. Some people who felt like it was, wasn't was real far out there, and other people who felt like uh, this person has seen one too many Conjuring movies. So, eh. which, you know, that wouldn't be a bad episode to do, the the, the Warrens. I, I didn't think about that, but we might add that to our calendar. Okay. Talked about them, at least. Yeah. So... Other than that, you know, uh, as always, share us with your friends, especially Thanksgiving's coming up. You know, you might have us playing while you're making the turkey or whatever. I'm not saying don't play the holiday music, but you, yeah, this is a fun little thing to listen to while I'm finishing up the turkey and whatnot, you know. And then once everybody sits down, then you turn on the Christmas music. But you, you might share us with your family and friends. And if you hate what we do, you know, keep it to yourself, as always. So there, there you go. So... 
that's pretty much our opening. Yep. And in this episode, I, I like to say we break our show breaks down into really four key areas. We have history, folklore, true crime, and the paranormal. And this covers at least three of the four. So that's that's good for me. We we hit both History, folklore, and then, of course, we add in a little true crime. In the historical category, as well as true crime, we visit 19th century Kansas, where we examine the Bloody Benders, a family of so-called spiritualists that murdered passerby with money. Then we travel back to 14th century Scotland to discuss the Sawney Bean Clan, a folk story with perhaps some basis in history of a clan of thieves, murderers, and cannibals who terrorize the Scottish countryside. We discuss the ultimate outcomes of both families and why some people would want to know, would we put these two stories together? I'll tell you why. Uh, because we're gamers in this house. I play, We play D&D and, and other things because that's who we are. We're kind of nerdy. Right, Krista? Yeah. Sometimes. Too nerdy. So... One of the games I play is a game called Call of Cthulhu, and I combined both these stories, plus the novel The Curious Case of Charles Dexter Ward, to create a somewhat rousing adventure in a game called Call of Cthulhu. So that's why we put them together. Might as well... I'm well that, and I still say the whole family and food well, works well. Yes, yes it does. I mean, twist it, but well. So before we get into either of the crazy clans we're going to talk about. Let's hear from Krista and her weird facts. Krista, 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 Krista. So, hi Krista, it's time for your weird facts. What are your weird facts about? Hello. Originally, I was going to do them about camp. City, but we changed our minds because Thanksgiving is the day we'll be posting this. Which, a lot of the times it seems the special days are the ones we post on. It's kind of worked out this, this that way this year. It, it has. has. Yeah. It has. Um, anyway, so today's facts are about Thanksgiving because that's what's coming up. And today I got today's facts from a website called Fred, FredBeans.com. Fred Beans. Fred Beans. Fred Beans. Fred Beans. Not even Fred Beans, just Beans. Fred. Anyway, let's get started, shall we? Let's get started. Yeah, what do you got for us? Fact number one. Fact number uno, if you Uno? Uno. 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 Okay. Or if you want to speak French, uh. uh no. Uh, maybe after the turkey. <laughs> Just saying, that's how you say one in French. Uh. Uh, do, twat. Too much turkey. Uh. <laughs> the first Thanksgiving was only eaten with spoons and knives. Right, because horse didn't come along until horse much later. Horse or something. Later. <laughs> horse or something that most people take for granted. But imagine eating your turkey with a spoon instead of a fork for the spear. The reason for the fork being absent because was because it was not brought, but brought by the pilgrims in 1620. It was introduced 10 years later by Governor Winthrop of Massachusetts, but it was not brought into, into popular use until the 18th century. Well, yes, because most people, sad to say, would jam their knife into the meat and eat it off a knife. A little odd, but that's how things ruled. I prefer sporks. Because then you have a spoon and a, and a fork. 
Yeah. At the same time. So sure. if you wash your fork, you could just use your fork. Therefore. We could mess up this country if we introduced time travel and went back and gave the pilgrims sporks. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't think it that would happen. Too many things. They'd probably poke each other in the eye or something. I don't know what they do. <laughs> they'd burn us all at the stake as witches? That's definitely a possibility. Brendan. Number two, Benjamin Franklin wanted the turkey to be the national bird of the United States. Luckily for those who preferred the eagle, Thomas Jefferson was opposed to this idea and fought. Benjamin, Benjamin Franklin. Yeah, I, I think that it having... It been rumored that Benjamin Franklin... Named the male turkey Tom. <laughs> After Tom went, went to retaliation? In retaliation. In retaliation. Franklin's reasoning was that the turkey had much greater significance to the American people, being the main food source for the pilgrims, and he claimed that the eagle had a bad moral character. Okay. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, we already look bad enough as it is as a country half the time. I would have hated to have seen how things would turn out if our, if our national bird was the turkey. Yeah, I, I kind of like the eagle, even with its bad moral character. Yeah, right, yeah. If we were a turkey, yes. Yeah. It, w- it wouldn't be the same, all right? Just going to keep it at that. Number three. We're already getting into the greedy so fast. Man, you're proud of me, Miss V. Huh. Does she tell you you take too long? What? <laughs> no. Alright, number three. The best way to check if a cranberry is ripe is to bounce down, down it. If you need to know if a cranberry is ripe, all you need to do is throw it at the ground and measure how high it bounces. The issue as is... long as it bounces higher than four inches, it is ready to be picked. Who knew... That is what it takes to make perfect cranberry sauce for your Thanksgiving. The cranberry is actually one of the only three fruits that are native to the North America, and it is served at 94% of Thanksgiving dinners. Wow. That was like a super fat. I, I had some issues with that. Me too. Like the logistics on that comment are way, way, way off. So, if you throw it, and it doesn't bounce, but goes flat, then it was really right. It was not ready. And now you wasted it. And if you throw it and it doesn't bounce, it wasn't ready to be picked. Yeah. But you can't pick it. You can't throw it until after you pick it. Therefore, this is a garden. I don't know. This is a messed up test. I'm just, I'm just throwing that up there. And aren't cranberries grown in bogs anyway? Yeah, they're like water. I think. Like, yeah. I don't know. Go ahead. Okay. Otherwise, why are the guys from Ocean Spray always hanging out in... In water. Yeah. Thanksgiving brought about the creation of TV dinners. 
part of the reason that Swanson started creating TV dinners in 1953.